So let's unplug the viewer and we'll move over here and we'll we'll come in here and we'll take a look at grid analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect that. I'll delete that one. And we'll take a look at, uh, at grid analysis. I'm actually having to use a different plate for this because I didn't actually have a grid for that particular shot. So I'll just connect my viewer up to this particular image. This is an image that's been shot and I do actually have a grid that was taken at the scene uh, uh, based on the lens that was used to record this particular shot here. So essentially grid analysis um, es estimates the distortion from a checkerboard. You can use a, th a thin line grid instead which will achieve an even greater uh, level of accuracy. The principle here is if you've got a grid um, you can use this to calculate le your lens distortion and in most cases this is the easiest and most accurate of the three processes available in Nuke. So if we, if I just quickly come back to this and we just take a look at this image, we can see that there is some barrel distortion uh, within this uh, particular shot. And a grid really is an essential part of the visual effects supervisor's toolkit. Typically, you'd get up and you'd hold the grid up in front of the camera every time the lens is changed. Um, and there are three basic rules which should be observed. And I think I've observed two of these rules of the three for this particular one. First of all the grid needs to align to the camera which thankfully it does. The second is that the grid needs to be the broadly speaking the same aspect ratio as the image that you're trying to capture which is correct in this particular case. And The third one is that the grid has good contrast and that's where I went a little bit wrong here that you can see that this grid certainly has, uh, doesn't have great contrast. Um, you can uh, you can get grids, uh, you can do download grids for many of the common lenses which is uh, which is quite helpful. But if we take a look at this, this uh, it's quite uh, it's quite poor in terms of color correction. So I just uh, I just did a grade node just to sort of uh, to try and improve it. Uh, if you take a look at the grade node, all I really did was just redefine the black point and the white point and a slight a slight adjustment to the multiply. Okay. So that's going to give a much better. Uh, chance of uh, of establishing the uh, the grid analysis. So what I need to do is I just need to apply a lens distortion node below this uh, below this grade node, and we'll switch into our grid analysis. And you can see this is very simple. So there's the checkerboard type. We can see there's the thin line one, which if we've got that particular uh, tool available to us, will actually create us a very accurate solve. And we can pretty much just uh, analyze the grid from here. So I'll just hit the button. This is very, very quick. And uh, if we now flick back to the lens distortion, we can see that the radial distortions have been applied. We can see that, that it's made it's, uh, it's adjusted the values of the distortion center and it's adjusted the values in the car parameters as well. So what I can do now is I can select my uh, my my completed undistort there and type alt c just to duplicate it bring that over here hook it up to my plate and connect up I'll just pull this down a little bit so that we can see a little bit more of the image and then we can see the effect of that uh, of that lens distortion so if I just start toddling that off with the, with the D key we can see the before and after we can see that's being undistorted so very quick and easy with the with the grid. Okay, so I think that would be a reasonable uh, point to to break off. So uh, in the third part of the tutorial, we will take a look at line-based analysis.